Hey guys, welcome back. So I'm about to move. So I thought before I did, I would bring out all the random stuff that I use that makes my life easier. So I've got 10 items I suggest keeping in your brewery that aren't necessarily homebrew equipment. All right, so let's get started. Number one, butterfly hose clamps. If you have used a screw hose clamp, you know how terribly annoying they are. I constantly end up missing the, the screw hole and hitting my knuckles and cursing the heavens, basically. I really love these butterfly ones. Uh, they're different colors based on different sizes and they turn easy and you don't have to use a friggin' screwdriver. I use these on all my hoses, so anything that's pouring liquid, anything that's got gas going, it's really important to make a proper seal. So you're gonna need to use a hose clamp anyway, unless you wanna play the dice and leak everywhere. So strongly suggest getting yourself a couple packs of these. They are lifesavers and make transferring way easier. Number two, rubber bands. I used to tape all my grain bags closed. I don't really transfer my grain out of the bags I get them in, especially if I order them online because, you know, they come in the nice plastic bags and why bother transferring them? I'm sure in the future I'm gonna start transferring my larger bags into bins, but I don't see a reason to stop using the plastic. And I used to use tape and given the fact that malt is inherently flowery and dusty, the tape lasts for like one use and then you have to toss it out and it's hard to like reuse. So rubber bands. I also use these uh, viewtainer things to make rubber band holders or dispensers really and just dispensers of all sorts. I really like these. I'm gonna link to all my equipment below by the way in case you wanna grab some of it. I don't even know where these came from. My husband got them for me. Great. I'm, I'm like honestly, more stoked about this rubber band dispenser that I have created than most things in the brewery. Number three, spray bottles. Okay, so when I started brewing, I would make a five gallon batch of sanitizer every time. It's a waste and sanitizer is expensive. So a hand pump, or my favorite, a Hudson sprayer. This is also a wallpaper sprayer. It says wallpaper mini sprayer on it. This is what I use for sanitizer all the time. You can get a fine mist in any crevice. It's awesome. I do everything with this now. I rarely make a five gallon batch of sanitizer anymore. I honestly, like when I'm cleaning my kegs and sanitizing them, I'll fill up, A, I clean like three kegs at a time because I'm lazy and I'll do the whole PBW thing and then make sanitizer in there, split it between three things and one of these. So this lasts me a long time. And you know, some people might say that it loses its potency after a while, but I've never really noticed that. And I probably keep this for like two weeks or so. It's been great ever since. On another cleaning front, bleach. I have been known to forget about hoses and they, uh, they get gross. If you have mold or an infection or anything, or just something's been sitting for a long time, I strongly suggest bleaching the hell out of it. Also, I found this out when I was working at a juice shop. If you have plastics, uh, this typically works better for hard plastics, hoses, not so much, but uh, if you leave a strong bleach solution in like, a tub or something that's plastic, it will get stains out. It's kind of crazy. It's just like clothes, so yeah. But always have bleach around. It will save your ass. And if you run out of sanitizer and you're in a pinch, you can make a bleach solution that will work, but you have to rinse it after. Uh, that's the main thing to keep in mind when you are using bleach and home brewing. You have to rinse the hell out of it. It, if it smells like chlorine still, keep rinsing, keep rinsing, keep rinsing. I'm sure all of you know this, but having a Sharpie around is kind of the greatest thing ever. Uh, I actually have a little Sharpie hack for you guys. Um, so I write on everything with Sharpies. I use it like it's 
you know, just, I don't know, a dry erase marker, I guess, because I figured out that you can remove Sharpie with standard run-of-the-mill rubbing alcohol. So I write on all my stainless steel, all my glass, um, even some plastics. Plastics tend to ghost, so you'll get, you know, whatever, but like I just reuse the same shitty plastic lids for my mason jars and stuff, and it's fine. So another thing I've actually found, and I'm sure you guys have seen it, I have these stickers that glossy stickers can you can actually wipe off the sharpie with some alcohol and i'll show you right now all right so standard 70 percent rubbing alcohol This is not the Rye IPA, by the way. This is clean. I just didn't wipe this off yet. It literally comes right off. How cool is that? When I figured that out, I was like, what have I been doing my whole life? So alcohol is probably something else you should probably keep around. Another thing, grip clips. Um, I don't know if there's another name for these. Uh, my husband's in the TV industry, so we call them grip clips. I don't know. They grip and their clips, so sure. Uh, I use these mainly to connect things. So I have this glycol jacket thing that doesn't quite fit around some things or like if I'm trying to chill two kegs at once, I'll take one of these that has the holes in the back and just tie a string and to another one and they make a clip. And they're really, really strong. I've also used these when I'm brewing outside and using my actual brew in a bag. Basically, when I'm rolling up my bag, I will just clip these to the board I'm rolling it onto so I don't have to sit there and hold it the whole time. It's awesome. I don't know what these are called, but these are like the things that you get when you get electronics and they're meant to like make your cords nice, but they work awesome for small tubing. So if you want to be neat, which I usually am not, I will, am going to try to be once I move. This is the ticket to having nice and tidy hoses. I have two bins that I keep hoses in and they're always a friggin' mess, but I'm going to get way more of these and try to make my new year's resolution to actually clean things, but see how nice and small and compact. If you don't have stainless steel or UV protected fermenters, a large t-shirt is your best friend. So at least on my fur monsters, I have seven gallon fur monsters typically, the neck hole is just about enough to go right around the lip and it will go all the way down to the bottom. So this will protect your beer from light, which you don't want skunking. And like if you're using carboys or, you know, the plastic kind of carboys, it's really important to keep them light tight. And I know I brew in a room with windows, so it's kind of hard to get them in a dark spot. It's not like I have a closet that I can ferment in. So I always wrap them in a dark t-shirt. And grip clips actually come in great handy because say, you're using a carboy, you can just make that much and clip it together. That's what I do every time, like so. Microfibers. A lot of you guys actually ask me what kind of towels I used, which uh, I, I don't know if it's just like what industry I work in, but I have microfibers everywhere. I work in the art world, so I'm constantly cleaning frames and stuff, and you want something that's not abrasive. And these things absorb liquid like it is no one's business. You can just throw this on a puddle and it will suck it all up immediately. It's wild. I strongly suggest getting yourself a pack. You can buy these on Amazon for like nothing. And I have stacks, as you can see. All right, last but not least in the cleaning realm, the workhorse of my brewery because I am terribly messy as a lot of you have seen when I'm pouring malt. So I love my cordless vacuum. 
Uh, this is like some Makita brand. We just have a ton of these Makita batteries and they do a great job. It's like a dust buster, whatever. You know, I actually have a, a wish list going. I want that Dyson one. I'm probably gonna break it with the amount of malt I suck up though. Well, I hope that if you're new to home brewing or just never thought about these things, that this video was helpful and I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching, like and subscribe. If you want my videos early, you can check out the Patreon. I've got merch, shout outs, ad free and early videos. That's the main thing. And coming up soon, I'm gonna have a lot of bonus content from my podcast that I'm starting. So keep an eye out for that. I'll see you guys next time.